All right. We are a go. Are a go, everyone. Are a go, everyone. Are a go, everyone. Are a go, everyone. All right. Uh, I guess as we wait for people to trick in, uh, this is CSE. 598, Spring 2024. Uh, we have the two current open modules are <clears throat> format string exploits and file structs exploits. Uh, but of course, nobody is here. So let me Meantime, I will drink my coffee. I guess I should play with. Uh... Open event. All right, hello, people joining. Oh, nice. Right. Cool. Um, all right. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes. Let's say two of people trickling in. Uh, if there's something you want me to discuss, please, or questions you have about one of the open modules. Uh, right now we got format strings and file struct exploits. Please let me know. <clears throat> I guess, uh, my thought was, um, can't, uh, depending on what questions we get, maybe I'll, I don't know, go over a CTF challenge that used uh, files overwrite stuff. Yeah, look at that, six people, woo, okay. Somebody ask me a question. Let's see, mic check. Oh, I just don't know how to use Twitch. Okay. Let's see. So format strings, you already have my office hours, you have Robert's office hours, I feel like, and most of you, let's see, I don't know if most of you, but a good amount of people are done with format strings, which is great news. And file struct exploits, uh, you're clearly putting this off, which is fine, it definitely makes sense. Um, although some people have done it uh, already. All right. Well, oh, can we see that off? That's fine. 
Then let's go into file structure exploits. Um, okay. So you can uh, definitely go through these challenges. Um, and they're really good. I think the, especially the file struct, this is again, so kind of continuing on the theme of how do we, like by understanding how something works, how can we get it to um, do something that we want? So we saw that with format strings and you're getting uh, in-depth knowledge there of understanding, controlling format strings, uh, how to exploit them. The kind of, and, and where this uh, file struct Exploiting, exploitation works is answering the question again, uh, which is a similar question that you had in the um, in the format strings is, okay, you get an arbitrary read or an arbitrary write, then what? Um, so here, maybe you have some overwrite of a file structure in memory. The question is, what do you do from there? Where do you go from there? And what can that actually allow you to do? Um, and as the lectures show, there's actually a lot of default um, and, and why this is important and why we focus on this because um, many applications will use file structs. So it's a, it's a common exploitation tip and technique to try to uh, be able to do that. And also you can, as we can see, you can then uh, escalate it all the way from arbitrary read write and also into um, arbitrary execution. The other super cool thing here is that this, um, what I like about this is that it also uh, really gets you to start digging into glibc. And so really what you should be thinking about and the more higher level concepts and skills that you need to develop is not, how do I exploit this specific file thing? How do I use file to get this specific thing? But okay, this file thing is super cool, but as the developers add more mitigations to it and add uh, checks in the code for different kinds of things, it'll eventually not be a, a very uh, sought after exploitation primitive. So how do these people, how do you find the next one? And so by understanding how these work at a fundamental level, it gives you some insights into how people approach uh, exploiting these types of vulnerabilities. Um, so with that, okay, again, if anybody has any questions, drop it in the chat. Uh, I will not be doing any of these levels. Uh, let's look at an actual CTF challenge which is what I want to do. Uh, so this is one, a CTF challenge I remember doing in, um, in uh, CTF 2023. Let's see when that was so I can properly shout out the people that did that. Um, so CTF 2023 was a CTF in June of 2023. Jeopardy CTF um, by the social engineering experts. Uh, so it was a pretty fun CTF. I played this with, as always, uh, Shellfish. And I believe, and again, this is like all of my stuff. We won't actually like uh, mess with any of these things, but we can for sure uh, start there. So if I remember correctly, we were given, and let me uh, increase the font size and max. You never remember there's a nice new feature where you can increase the font size for all uh, of your frames or in buffers. Change onto globally. Control X uh, uh, plus. There we go. Okay, so we can see simple little challenge, build it, whatever. We can look at the Docker file. So it's from Ubuntu uh, 2204. Copy chow into app run, copy anything related to the key in app, copy flag into slash flag. Um, and we don't need to care about that. So that's what they're telling us. Of course, we should never take anything that they uh, give us just straight as is. Um, did they give us the C file? I guess that makes sense. Yeah. So that's the other cool thing. I do remember this about this challenge is that um, it actually uh, gave us the C file. So we didn't have to do a ton necessarily of reversing. 
uh, even though, of course, love uh, reversing and like reversing. So we can see here, defining some constants, a buffer size, number of files. Uh, there are several global um, variables just defined here. And again, I, I looked last looked at this in June of 2023. Uh, I remember roughly how I exploited it, but I didn't actually dig into the x.py, so I don't quite know uh, if this will be, I don't know where we're actually going here. Uh, I see the font is pretty small. Let me control it. Okay, cool. So main CS intro, constant, modify in place, modify not in place. First, you will modify files contents not in place. Next, you will modify files contents in place. Finally, I will demonstrate what constant means. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, file name buffer. So a um, array of size 10, uh, sn printf into file name 10, um, key percent d text i. So we're creating i, I think it'll be i zero dot text, i one dot text, whatever. Fp, so the file pointer, um, f open that file name. There's FP, so FP is this global here. Uh, so setting a global variable to F open, then reading from the file pointer, uh, the buffer size into buffers. So, okay, we're gonna, so each of these arrays of buffers is going to have, yeah, so buffers is an array. Okay, yeah, that's right. I do remember this now that I see this. Uh, we'll probably have to look at this too in the actual um, uh, decomp when we get there and the, the program itself. But this is an array of three character pointers. And those character pointers are point, one points to buff, one points to prev, and one points to backup. Um, then we have, this is uh, demonstration one, modify not in place, what size to allocate. So it's gonna tell us that it's gonna allocate something. Um, Scanf percent D chunk size, uh, C alloc, if I remember, I don't remember off the top of my head, if I remember correctly, C alloc actually uh, will allocate in zero, but let's, you know, always, it's always a bad idea to just remember, rely on that good old memory. Uh, count size, uh, the C alloc function contiguously allocates enough space for count objects that are size bytes of memory each and returns a pointer to the allocated memory. The allocated memory is filled with bytes of value zero. Cool, okay, so it does allocate that. So it'll allocate it one times chunk size. So it'll allocate um, whatever size we want. Then it asks us which file to read. So into percent i, i minus equal to one to deal with indexing. So this means that we'll specify which file to read as a one, one two, and three. It'll subtract it by one to use zero indexing. Uh, note that I'm already noticing something here. What is it not doing here? Everyone all at once. Everyone all at once, he says, looking at the Twitch chat for some input. It is, of course, because nobody's here and I'm talking to myself. Um, <clears throat> there is no, uh, there's no validation that this is actually between one and three. So it's just reading scanf percent D and then it's subtracting one from it. And then it's using that to mem copy from, and I always forget the order of mem copy. So I'm gonna look at the man page of mem copy. It's destination source N. So mem copy from buffers I. So use that I index mem copy from wherever that pointer is into this chunk pointer. This chunk pointer is what was allocated up here and the minimum of either buffer size or chunk size, whichever is smaller. So first thing we should check is whenever I see a mem copy, I say, okay, is this chunk size what we can, can we control that size to make it really large? And we're reading in this chunk size. Chunk size isn't integer. So, but we're allocating chunk size. Um, ooh, yeah, what I would look at is, so there's buffer size and chunk size. Um, where did this min come from? Oh yeah, here. 
int a int b a greater than b then b otherwise a so let's see chunk size one of the things i could do is give it a negative number so when we call it pass it to calloc i think that'll be a big number but this check here may bypass it anyways it's something i keep in my head so I'd say okay one thing is where i can uh, mem copy from is not bounds checked so i could the uh, source here there's definitely a vulnerability here where I can control the source. There might be with more, uh, I could maybe prove to myself that is there a way I can bypass this, um, this size check so that I am mem copying a larger value than I allocated. Um, I don't think so. I think this is actually fine, but I need to double check that. Um, and we can maybe talk about ways to do that. Then store fp for the constant demonstration at the end so in j is whatever we gave as i remember again i was something that we controlled uh i plus one uh percent num files is j s n printf uh, so it's yeah creating that key file name with j and substituted in there maximum size 10 file name fp is open read um so it said ooh allocated you a chunk at p so this is great Again, when we're doing, you know, CTFs or anything, we want to make sure that what we're being allocated here in this chunk pointer, uh, it, sorry, what we want to check for is if we get any leaks. So here's a clear leak. It's like literally telling us this is where chunk pointer was allocated. Uh, so that is sweet. We want to make sure that we can uh, deal with that. Okay, next thing, content of there. So read um, from zero. So read from standard input into chunk pointer, the chunk size, and the number of bytes actually read in. Um, if the number of bytes that was read in is greater than hex 91, sorry, you're asking too much. So it's just trying to limit it, limit us and exits. Uh, a potential interesting thing is that it actually does read it in there, but then checks the size afterwards. So we could, uh, although we are doing chunk size, so we could read in more than hex 91 in there. Uh, or hex 90, I guess, is the limit because it's uh, it's greater than. Okay, but otherwise it sets chunk pointer, the number of bytes read minus one to be zero. So it uh, nulls that out. Demonstration one, modify in place, uh, content. So I, I less than one percent num files. Ah, so here we can see that it is actually doing the proper uh, a bounds checking here by using the modulator operator to make sure that I is within zero and number of files. Uh, so that's good. Uh, then scanning buffers I, so reading some input from us. Remember scanf has weird restrictions on what we can actually put pop in there. Reading that into buffers I. Then demonstration three, constant uh, FP was previously stored. So freed. Oh, F read. Uh, let's pull up those menus. So F read into this pointer of buffers J, where J, well, why are we using J here and not I? That's interesting. J is the one we started all the way up here. Um, and again, this is also does have this the correct check of using the mod operator. Uh, size one of buffer size into F. Okay, so read from FP, and FP was previously stored because FP, as we saw, is the, yeah, this is what's read in here. Cool. So we'll actually see we have a lot of uh, file structs open because remember, every time we call this F open, it's going to allocate a file struct. So let's look at what else we have here. Oh yeah, they had key zero, key one, key two was here. Uh, we had this flag file. I think if I remember correctly, yeah, it says this is a fake flag, but that's eventually what we want to read. And we did not have, so we can see in here, we don't have a lib C. So first thing I'm gonna run is check sec on this. Uh, oh, cool, that's a fun error message. Um, <clears throat> that would be the first thing. Uh, clear. I'm going to go to my other server, which has an actual, uh, not my Linux, uh, my Mac that I'm on right here. 
So let's do check sec. Okay, so it's full railroad, canary, NX enabled, PIE. Um, definitely one potential issue is like we saw that, so let's check this Docker file. So it's running in a Docker file 2204. I believe if I said uh, CAD ETC issue, what is this? This is 2204.3. Um, we'll just exploit it here. One of the key things is again, remembering that um, uh, your all the behaviors that we're kind of interested in, in the allocator, how the memory is allocated in, uh, in on the heap, and also these file structs are dependent on exactly what operating, like of what libc version that you're using. Uh, so we definitely want to make sure we're analyzing the right thing. Um, if we know the libc version, uh, we can actually extract it and change the binary to use the local one. I'm not going to show that now, but that's kind of a, a standard technique. So let's make sure this thing runs. Um, cool. So let's do size 10, file 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Why am I doing 9? Oh, maybe I don't need to. Uh, foo bar. Cool. Okay, did some stuff. It's actually pretty simple um, functionality. And things we know is it doesn't operate in a loop. Uh, but let's, the big thing is, let's run it in GDB. So I'm running GDB, I have Jeff here. And what I want to understand is, in this program, what does the heap look like? So I have and where does all this memory locations look like? And actually to do that, it's time to fire up Ida because I like my Ida. We haven't updated in a while. I don't know how this is gonna go. Feel free to, if you're following along, feel free to ask questions. Um, I already have an IDA file, but I don't want to use that. Let's just throw in, throw in, ah, so annoying. Okay, I think I can throw it in here. There we go. Open, oh, no, won't even let me do that. I will throw this away, move the trash, it just, there we go. Cool. Do all of your stuff. Oh, great. I think I did upgrade, but don't worry about that. Okay. Cool. So got my handy Ida. And this is, you can actually just go through this again and matching that up with uh, the C code. But it's so easy, I actually don't think we need to do that. You can even, but one of the cool things is, and I think one thing that's helpful, is you can actually practice of how do things look in C source code if you're not actively doing this? Like this F read buffers J, but here it's F read buffers address of plus int V1, which is super weird. And if we look, it's because it does not know. It just thinks that there's an offset. This buffers has lost the, the type here. So this is one of the nice things that you can do to kind of uh, just practice. Um, so we know that buffers is not a void star. Buffers is a character pointer of length three. So by changing that and then going back to here, we can see that, boom, it actually makes our decompilation better and makes the decompilation match the original C source. Uh, it's fun to uh, practice these kind of things here so that you can A, see what they look like to develop those patterns in your head. And then B, when you're decompiling something that obviously you don't have source to, you can more easily do that. Um, so let's, so what do I want to do? Oh, yeah, because this I actually did want to go to those um, to buffers. So if we go here, now we can see a little more something about where all these. So buffers is in the dot data section. Uh, because again, right, the C source code uh, does read and write move the head in file struct. Uh, F read and F write will, but read will not. If you just call the underlying read syscall, uh, it shouldn't affect that. But things like scanf will use, I believe, the file uh, struct for standard output or standard input. 
Um, so we can look in here, we have buffers, we have three things, buff, preve, and backup, and these are both offsets within here. I believe it's maybe laid out roughly similar here, where it's uh, first preve, buff, backup. And let's see here. So preve, uh, we can actually just easily change this. So our type here is character of zero x one miles one. Oops, I of course messed that up. Hundred, not a thousand. Yeah, so we have previous buff and backup uh, is how this should be actually defined. Okay, ah, and we have a file pointer of this FP here. Cool. So, uh, so we can see where FP is here, this file pointer. We have a uh, backup buff and preve. Interesting thing is that, oh yeah, so we can see that uh, this again is kind of interesting of how things uh, map up in C code and the actual binary and why looking at the binary is so important. Here we have in the .bss, uh, preve, buff, backup, and FP. And this is actually because BSS uh, loads by default as uh, zeros, whereas buffers is somewhere completely different it's in the dot data section because it's being, uh, it has preloaded data and doesn't have zeros in it. So this is why, even though they're laid out in this order of one, two, three, four, five, uh, buffers is actually somewhere completely different. Okay, but let's look at some of these uh, structs. And when I wanna do that, let's go to main. I wanna see where we go in, okay. I wanna see where this chunk gets allocated. Yeah, the C alloc. Um, of course, I haven't set up all my fancy stuff to debug uh, from within here, but and have it match up, but that's okay. X uh, dis s main, so disassemble main. Um, one thing I can, of course, do is look at where this call is, which is here. It's at main plus 151. Run the program. That is definitely in the wrong place. Uh, and that's because this maybe is hex. Break from D1, D2, D3. Okay, it's gonna do a set VBuff. Uh, let's just say about there. I guess I could always, another way of quickly doing this is to take a break on Okay, cool. Uh, what size to allocate? 100. All right, now we're in this call to see alloc. So now we will see alloc exactly the size that we sent, 100. Um, but if we think about where are we in this program, so we're right at the C alloc. One question would be what else has been allocated, right? And this is where the nice thing about um, Uh, this program is that is of using uh, GDB and specifically Jeff is we can look at the chunks that are already exist here. Uh, let's look at, um, so we'll do next instruction. So we called C alloc. Now RAX should have our address. Um, we can look at this. So we asked for, remember we asked for 64 hex or 100, we got a chunk of size 70, um, 70 hex, which is 112. 
and let's look at where that is. CC80, that is here, CC80. We can see there's actually a decent amount of other chunks. Um, 10-1-E, 10-E-0, 10-E-0. Um, and the other thing we can look for is X. Uh, dot, so examine giant memory at FP. Uh, ooh, F bad. Okay. So that this FP is that global variable. So this was assigned. Let's see if we're allocating here. That means this FP was the thing that was opened here. Um, and we can see this. And that doesn't make sense. Why is that? Oh, 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 because we see alloc here, but FP hasn't been changed until down here. So. Oh, there we go, okay. I was doing that wrong, I wanted the address. Yeah, FP is here, which means that is here. Um, and let's look at, yeah, so then the heap chunks, we should see 680 right here, boom. So we know that our allocation here is also around this 1E0. So this is our, uh, specifically our file pointer that's here. Let's see if we if I remember correctly, this, these two should also be file pointers uh, because that is in here. These ones get opened as well and don't ever get closed. So maybe there should be more. Okay. Cool, but uh, all right, we're running slightly short on time. Anyway, so we've seen that we can control an allocation here. Uh, we can see that we're at CC80. There's a file pointer at 680. And let's see. Let's look back at our vulnerabilities that we thought about. So our vulnerabilities were, we think maybe um, yeah. So which file to read, right? We can access anything. So we can mem copy from anywhere onto the chunk pointer. Uh, I think I kind of vaguely remember this. So we can, from some offset of buffers. So first thing to do is look at where we would want to be. we're at buffers here. Um, and so we can, and the interesting thing is we can go, so we need to do pointers, right? So this is mem copying. And again, I always forget this thing. Okay, the source. So we can copy from somewhere onto chunk pointer. Ah, okay, interesting. Huh. Okay. Wonder if that's useful. I should have uh, cheated on this exploit and uh, looked at where the eventual control was, but I think we can get there. Okay, so we. we can do is copy from some offset of buffers and we can even go up, but if we go up, we're kind of getting into the GOT, which may or may not be useful. I actually don't know. That's kind of interesting thought experiment. Uh, we can go negative or we can go positive. And if we go positive, we can then read from standard out. So we can copy the uh, file, the standard out file pointer. Um, we can copy, uh, whatever this completed zero is. I don't remember what that was in the program. Oh, it's that detour stuff. 
Uh, we could copy from previous buff backup or FP. Let's see, does any of that actually help us? So this mem copy, wait, why am I looking there? Uh, this mem copy is done after the allocation, but before this final FP thing. So I think that copying from there would not be useful. Um, let's look at, I will now do something for, of course, purely educational purposes. Uh, I'm going to cheat and look up in another screen where, of course, you hopefully can't see it. Uh, look up my exploit. Because I vaguely remember how to do this, but it sure <clears throat> would be nice. Okay. Yep. Uh, minimum of our size and 256 would copy for buffers where you control I into your new memory. Yeah, okay, this is great. This is a good thing that I'm finding the same bugs. Uh, things of offset of buffers. Wow, this is literally everything I did. Uh, in the GOT, we had everything in there. In the VSS, we had standard out glibc, completed zero, which is using detours, pre buff, backup, and FP. Um, opens another file name. Oh yeah, these are just all my notes, ideas. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I forgot this thing is actually crazy complicated, even though it uh, ends up in file system stuff. Okay, but. I should have started. Ah, okay, 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 that's right. I remember there's another trick in here. Um, okay, cool. Okay, so which file to read? I guess I don't actually use that. Why is that? Make good notes notes with your uh well, let's look at that file struct since we have that in here. Cool. So this is the uh file structs you've been messing with, but of course, without all the fancy uh, structures in there. Um, okay. Let's start a script to start playing with this. Um, oh, nice, thank you.
Okay, but where are we here? Okay. We're reading in input. Doesn't seem right. Okay, so, oh, I know, maybe I could delete some of that stuff, okay. Okay, we're gonna use one trick that you may not have seen yet. Um, I'm going to cheat my way. Uh, Demo.py. Cool. Then I can get all my stuff in here. All right. First, I don't want to go here. I want to go here. Okay. Uh, Pom.debug. Pom process. Cool. Okay, I have my ideas. And then we will, yeah. So let's go up here. Okay. Cool. This is actually something you could uh, easily do, but let's do, yeah, so size. So the key is what's size. So which size to allocate? Uh, test size. So remember, we get some allocation um, and we get that leak. So one of the things we need to think about is as we're trying to do this is because we have check sec on and all of those values, we don't know where anything is in memory. Well, except for this leak, we have this leak. We know the address of our chunk. Um, and if we can do that, so, what that gives us is the heap, right? If it's allocated on the heap. Uh, so let's do this. Test size. Um, yeah, okay. So con.sendlineF uh, test size. Okay. And. Let's run it in Tmux. Actually, shoot, I have that nice thing. Yeah. This will actually pop up a new window. This is actually really cool. This dash CC, I can't remember what this option is, but if you use a nice terminal. This means that as new windows pop up, they'll pop up uh, as a new native window for me, which makes debugging way easier. So I can do things like uh, no demo, demo.py. So see the debugger will then start up in a new different window. Um, okay. I, I wanted to, what size to allocate? Okay, leaked. Okay, adding some debug output. Now, and I'm gonna add an input statement here just so that it waits for me here. So let's do the demo, go. Okay, so now I've leaked out that chunk. So let's break here. Let's run a VM map to see where everything is. Uh, the other thing you can do is with VM map is ask it exactly where a pointer is. So I can see that I've allocated something on the heap. So I know, so let's say I even get an arbitrary read write, I can maybe change things on the heap 
but what I don't know is any of this other information. So I don't know where the binary is because this is random. I don't know, and the offset between the heap and the binary is usually too large to brute force. Uh, I don't know where libc is. I don't know where the loader is. I don't know why I copied all that stuff. Um, but we actually, because we studied allocation or we can study allocation, there is a way to get the system to allocate you something that is not on the heap. Uh, so let's And if we didn't know this, we'd think, hmm, okay, where can I get other things from? And that's where I'd go to the malloc internals here. I would say uh, malloc algorithm. If there's a suitable chunk in the tcache, it's returned. We've definitely gone over that. If the request is large enough, large enough, mmap is used to request memory directly from the operating system. Now that the threshold for mmapping is dynamic uh, and there's a limit. Okay, great, but we're not doing that. So we can actually get so directly from the operating system. So now we go, um, where's my thing? Right, mmap, uh, as we know, actually, I think we've, we've used this before. So we know that mmap will actually be doing things on the actual file system. So let's uh, kill this. So what if there's the um, default m mmap threshold. So it sh this is saying that if we do at least this much, uh, 20,000 hex, then we should get allocated on the, the heap. So let's change this value. Um, okay, there we go. Allocated your chunk. The map here, and let's ask where that is. Boom, so it's this new memory region. So now I get an allocation, is that, is that 8.2? Oh, here, 8.2. So I get this allocation here, and um, and the crazy thing is, so, uh, M maps are usually not, I don't know if it's, I think it's an implementation detail of Linux because obviously it's uh, giving you an entire page of memory, right? Into your system, there's little to no randomization there and the offset, even though the there is um, randomization in terms of the prefix here, but if you notice the prefix here matches the prefix of almost all of these uh, in here, I think all the way down to the stack. So what this means is you're allocated at a fixed difference from uh, libc and the loader and everything. So yeah, this is how you can uh, use mmap. You can force uh, glibc's allocator to mmap you memory that you can then leak. That then gives you information about the heap. Uh, sorry, not about the heap, but about the layout. And this gives you a libc leak, which is super useful. Um, Let's verify that assumption because I just said it without, of course, actually verifying anything. Uh, the way I do this, I'm actually very uh, new test. Uh, I'm actually very lazy. I just do something like that. I know that was the thing that was given to me. And I know this is the libc base. Um, and then I'll kill this, run it again, continue. Oops, I didn't actually capture anything. Continue. Uh, so now I want to break here, VM map. So just to double check seven. Da, da, da. That's thirty five. That's that. So in my second test, this and this, and then I just do use handy dandy Python to verify that these are the same. <laughs> and I actually don't care that it's negative or honestly whatever, as long as this value is the same. Cool. So now if I can do this multiple times, then I can leak that uh, value out. So then I can leak the mmaps base. I can use that in order to calculate where libc is. Um,
Cool. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So we leak. So, but we, the interesting thing is we have this uh, restriction now, if we remember the program. So now we have a trick to leak out libc's base. Um, we, and the reason why we can do this, right, is because we control the malloc or the, here it's C alloc. It doesn't matter that's alloc versus uh, malloc versus C alloc. Um, I think it just, this is to prevent us from reusing something that may or may not already be in the, the, uh, the address space. It's probably an overkill. I don't think that's necessary, but then, right. But then when, so it's reading and it will read up to that many bytes, but if we send too much, then it will stop us from doing that. Um, so let me check out my right because we get multiple reads so we get uh content so this is when it reads in bytes read here and then we get another scanf into buffers i ah, okay okay Oh, uh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Now I remember where we went with this. So if we go back to buffers, uh, I actually lied to you earlier because I thought something was correct, but it actually isn't. Um, Right. Yeah, I feel like I need to reverse engineer this exploit to fully understand what's going on. So now we are, okay, buffers I, so we're going to write into there. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, okay, this key size. That's where all that stuff was. Okay, this makes sense of why. I was wondering why that... Uh, just for laps. Yeah, those are all the keys. Okay, that actually makes sense of why that was all in there. Um, okay. All right, the stuff, thing I'm stuck on is I know in this example, I'm putting in which file to read as one. So let's assume I put in one here for I. I minus equal to one is zero. So I mem copy from buffer zero into chunk pointer and buffer zero. Oh, okay. Right, okay, so into chunk pointer. And then J, if this is zero, zero plus one is one, mod number of files is one, so it's gonna open that up. And then, oh, here we go. Ah, yes, okay, this is the other thing. Ah, this is where I made a mistake. I saw this mod and I assumed, well, mod must mean that it's uh, safe, right? And so we have, I think it was already subtracted. So we had zero, uh, zero minus one is negative one. Mod three is two. So why does that work? Okay, let's debug this. Which file to read run? We want the final to be negative one. Okay. Okay. And let's go continue. Now we've leaked out the pointer. So let's go to the C program. We'd see that we are at uh, go up back to main. We, okay, so it said allocated you a chunk. 
So what I want to know is at here, the scanf. Uh, oops. Uh, of course, because I didn't do. <laughs> I need to make that interactive so it keeps going with it. I'm sure. Oops. Oh, there we go. Okay, now proof of kill. B scan F. All right. Okay, let's see where we are in main. Okay, we're right at the end of this final F read in the program. So now we are We're reading RDI, this should be buffers. This is prev. Oh, okay. All right, something here is definitely messed up. Uh, maybe my exploit was never working in the first place and now I'd have to reverse engineer how to actually exploit this. But I swear, should we just see if my exploit actually works? Yeah, let's do that. I see. Right. What's the problem with, uh, you know, running stuff on multiple machines? Broken pipe. Awesome. So I definitely have it where I have a pointer, I have an MMAP base, so I'm leaking out MMAP. Uh, then I'm leaking out libc. I'm finding out where standard ins file pointer is in libc. Definitely doing some stuff, but it is for sure not working. <laughs> and of course, if that doesn't work, we just change it slightly. Oh, so I'm calling F read from this buffer of size one. Uh, that's the file pointer. All right. Well, dang, I thought that'd be cool because uh, I definitely had this working at some point uh, where I was creating a fake wide data pointer and a fake vtable pointer and doing all that stuff to actually make it work. But uh, for some reason, uh, that is not working. So maybe the lib, I'm going to blame it on the libc version definitely has got updated and not that it never worked in the first place. Um, well, shoot. So, okay, I guess at least hopefully you learned a trick about uh, leaking out uh, controlling allocation and leaking out things from MMAP. That was actually, I think, the one thing I think during the CTF that I didn't know about this when I was trying to mess with it. Um, yeah. So, anyways, sorry about that. I thought that definitely would have worked. <laughs> All right. Bye.